this image, this big picture image of our planet is a picture of atmospheric greenhouse gas pollution planetary emergency. Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Carter for the Climate Emergency Institute. I'm in British Columbia, Canada. I will this I'm using this single image as an introduction to my two presentations I'm going to be giving shortly later this month, April, at the EGU 2017 General Assembly, the European Geosciences Assembly that they have every year around this time, and they cover practically uh, all the sciences. And I'm presenting the Atmospheric Greenhouse Gas Pollution Planetary Emergency. One advantage about, about having all these uh, different data sets is that it does give us a big picture. And so we're not going to, I'm not only focusing on one aspect, like, for example, uh, global warming. What we call a global climate change, terrible though climate change is, is what we call global climate change is actually greenhouse gas pollution in the atmosphere, and that involves far more than just climate. It involves particularly the oceans, of course, but it involves the entire biosphere. All systems of the biosphere are being rapidly damaged by uh, greenhouse gas pollution. That means we're looking at our entire planet. We're looking at uh, all of humanity. We're looking at almost all life on the planet. And we're looking at our future, at our common future. And the issue now is our common future survival. So I'm just going to tell you what these data sets are. This is carbon dioxide concentration. It's from Scripps Institute of Oceanography in the U.S. and it runs from 1960 to April 2017. This here is global warming. This is a uh, 18th of January 2017 release by NASA, GISS, and NOAA. The NOAA is the U.S.-based National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This temperature increase a plot I've taken from that release, and this is converted to a baseline of 1881 to 1920. That's important because when we're talking 2 degrees, uh, God forbid, or 1.5 degrees, this is the baseline that we're talking about. Uh, this is from NASA GISS. Again, these are the temperature increase maps, and this is the last year map that we have 2016 and here is the last month map that we have which is march 2017. this is carbon dioxide emissions uh, this is the latest estimate that we have just released last month march 2017 from the international energy agency this is fossil fuel carbon dioxide emissions and it runs from 1980 to 2016. this little block in the middle here this is where we're headed with respect to the present national emissions targets. What that means with respect to global emissions and global temperature increases. This one here again is atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations and it's from the NOAA. This is a very, very narrow recent record, just 10 years, running from 2007 to April 2017, the present time. The one here is carbon dioxide concentration again, and this is methane concentration, the other carbon gas, CH4. This is the Arctic. Here you see an image of the Arctic sea ice, Greenland, and most of the northern hemisphere. This, of course, shows the extreme, most extreme, 2016 Arctic warming, which is Arctic amplification. This is a sea ice, so we're also taking a look at sea ice. This is from the NSIDC, the National Snow and Ice Information Data Center in the U.S. This is 2017, January to March, record low sea ice buildup. And this longer term one of sea ice is from the NOAA again. This bottom row is the oceans, the effect of atmospheric greenhouse gas pollution on the oceans. This is sea surface temperature we're looking at, SST. This is from NASA GISS again, and it runs from 1960 up to 2016. The baseline again is 1881 to 1920. Uh, this is ocean heat, ocean heat content, also from the NOAA, running from 1960 to the most recent uh, record, which is average 2012. 2016. This is ocean oxygen, ocean deoxygenation. 
uh, taken from 1950 up to 2015 with data derived from the IPCC and their short-term projection. This is ocean acidification. The most recent record data set we have is up to 2016 and it's from the Japan Meteorological Agency. On the left here is pH. The pH I've simply inverted to show ocean acidification. This one at the end here, the last one, is sea level rise. And this is also from NOA, and it also runs from 1960, the most recent, 2012 to 2016. Now, there is a lot of data here. This is the most important data in the world, and there's a lot of numbers. My intention, particularly with this introduction, is that uh, anybody who has a um, genuine interest in the planet, you know, in humanity, in our future, in climate change, or what really is climate system change, because as I say, it involves all systems of the biosphere, so uh, that anybody would be able to appreciate fairly readily that we are in an emergency. What is immediately obvious here is there is a, uh, a grave, awful similarity between all of these data sets. It's April 2017, they're all increasing. Not only are they all increasing, they're increasing faster than ever. So this is carbon dioxide, this is temperature, this is carbon dioxide, this is methane. They are all increasing. This is the Arctic temperature, and this is the sea surface temperature. This is the heat in the oceans. This is deoxygenation of the oceans. This is acidification of the oceans. This is sea level rise. Everything is increasing at an amazingly terrible rate. So I think that uh, pretty well, you don't have to be, certainly don't have to be a climate expert. You don't even have to have a, a, a lot of science knowledge to be able to appreciate that this is an emergency situation that we're in, and it's an emergency for the planet.